Okay guys, welcome to Mr. Van Lowe's poorly monetized, low-budget science channel. Do not like, do not click subscribe. <clears throat> so low budget, we don't even edit our transitions. Okay, uh, today we're talking about topic 9.4, resolution. Your learning objectives are as follows. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to understand the limits on resolution placed by diffraction. Solve problems related to the Rayleigh criterion and resolving power called resolvents in diffraction gratings. Okay, so resolution of two objects means the ability to clearly see that two objects are distinct. And the example I like to go to here is a car uh, in the distance on a highway. Uh, when the car is close to you, you can see that the taillights are distinct, but as it gets further and further away, you will no longer be able to tell the difference between the two taillights. They'll look like one. Next time you're on a long distance trip on a long stretch of highway, check it out. Okay, the reason for this is because uh, the light from those objects is diffracting as it goes through your eye. Okay, and what that means is a uh, diffraction pattern is going to be cast on your retina, the back of your eyeball. If those patterns are far apart, and now we're talking about the pattern on your uh, retina, then you have no problem distinguishing that these two sources are distinct. Okay, so here we have an example. Uh, <clears throat> so this would be the diffraction pattern on your retina, and what we have here are two light sources, and we can tell that they're the same wavelength because the distance from here to here on our red pattern is exactly the same as the angular distance from here to here on our blue pattern. So that means we must have the same wavelength for both of our light sources. Okay, what happens then is uh, we get here what's called superposition, and you'll be familiar with this, where we add together our two waveforms, and what we find then is that this, this uh, purple line here is the sum of our two wave, waveforms, and what we see is a clear dip in this purple line, the sum of our two waveforms, and that dip means that we have resolution. Okay, here we have another example, and this time our diffraction patterns on our retina are closer together. And when we add them together, we get this purple line, and this purple line uh, is just one single peak, which means we do not have resolution. Um, this is going to appear as a single object. Okay, so the Rayleigh criteria just gives us a way to uh, quantify whether or not our sources are resolved. Okay, it gives us a really clear cutoff point, um, and that's important. So, it's really basic. Uh, so, the central maximum of one of our light sources must align exactly with the first minimum of the other light source. And where that occurs we should just barely have resolution, okay? And you'll note that this criterion is a little bit arbitrary, and that's true. There's probably a, a TOK question in here for UIB physics folks. Okay, so here we have um, examples of two light sources in scenario A, B, and C and we're asked whether or not we have resolution for A, B, and C, and if you want, you can pause the video and think it over yourself. Okay, I'm assuming you've paused the video and thought it over. So, yeah, what you probably noticed is that for A, we definitely do not have resolution. For B, uh, we have what appears to be the beginnings of resolution, so this might be, uh, this might be our Rayleigh criterion example here. And then for C, uh, we have two clearly resolved objects. So there you go. All right, so a little bit of math is involved. So 
that looks like this. Here we have theta sub a equals theta sub d equals lambda divided by b. Wow, so clear, so clear. No, that's actually not clear at all, because we haven't defined our variables, and you need to do that all the time. So uh, theta sub a is equal to angular separation of our sources, and that is given by s divided by d radians. Okay, so if we take the distance from source 1 to source 2 and divide that distance by uh, d, the distance from the observer to the two sources, then we get our angular separation of sources. Okay, so... Theta sub d is e equal to the angle of the first diffraction minimum. This is from topic 9.2. And b is equal to slit width. Okay, so there you go. Always be defining variables. A, b, d, v. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, or maybe didn't, anyway, uh, we have circular slits here. Your eyeballs are circular slits. Well, Actually, your eyeballs are spheres, but uh, your irises or pupils are, in fact, circles, okay? Circular slits. So the Rayleigh criterion for circular slits is given by theta sub d is equal to 1.22 times uh, lambda divided by b. And again, uh, we've identified these on the first page, so make sure you're familiar. Resolution occurs for circular slits where the angle of separation is greater than or equal to the angle of the first diffraction minimum. And that looks like this. Okay, so under these conditions, uh, S divided by D is greater than or equal to 1.22 times the wavelength of light divided by uh, the slit separation. Uh, slit width, rather. Okay, next up, we have diffraction gratings, and these are useful because they can resolve two different wavelengths of light that are very close to each other. Uh, they produce very distinct uh, diffraction patterns. Uh, remember from our previous lesson that the peaks are very narrow for diffraction gratings, and that is due to the fact that they have many, many slits. So normally, um, two different wavelengths that are close to each other would appear as a different wavelength, the uh, sum of those wavelengths. But using diffraction gratings, this is not a problem. Okay, so the resolving power of a diffraction grating is given by R resolving power is equal to average wavelength divided by change in wavelength. Average wavelength is the average of uh, one wavelength plus the other wavelength divided by 2. Wait a sec. Um, yeah. The sum of this wavelength plus this wavelength divided by 2. And the change in wavelength is just the larger value, uh, the smaller value subtracted from the larger value. R uh, <coughs> resolving power is also equal to m, small m times m, and defining our variables, M is the order at which the lines are observed, and N is the total number of slits on the diffraction grating. So diffraction gratings have many, many, many slits, and that is a defining characteristic of them. Okay, um, so what that means is that average wavelength divided by change in wavelength is equal to our order times the total number of slits on the diffraction grating. And if you're like me, you're probably looking at this and wondering what order means. So let's take a look at that. Uh, here we have a diffraction pattern produced by a grating. And what you'll notice is that uh, each one of these uh, positions is going to reveal uh, an individual diffraction pattern. Okay. So what we will have if we shine white light here is a rainbow here a rainbow here, a uh, rainbow over here, which of course would project onto a screen that we can't really see here, and then another rainbow here, okay? So what M then is, is an integer value indicating the number of diffraction patterns 
as we move away from the central pattern. So you just count plus one, plus two, plus three. And our central pattern is m is equal to zero. Okay. Uh, moving down, minus one, minus two, minus three. How do we know if it's plus or minus? We're just using Cartesian coordinate, um, the Cartesian coordinate plane where up is positive and down is negative. And that's it, guys. So hopefully now you can understand the limits on resolution placed by diffraction and solve problems related to the Rayleigh criterion and resolving power or resolvance in diffraction gratings. You should now try some problems from your textbook and make sure that you do not like this video nor click subscribe. I'm out.